Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see the comparison between the protocols we used for flow control. So far, we have discussed um, stop and wait protocol, go back n, and the selective repeat coming in sliding window concept. So these protocols uh, have been discussed in the previous lectures with uh, some examples and uh, some flow diagram. So here let us have the comparison of uh, different uh, uh, parameters we need to consider when we use the protocol. Here is the comparison for all three protocols. The first one is efficiency. So the efficiency of stop and wait protocol is 1 divided by 1 plus 2a. Here 2a is nothing but the ratio between propagation delay and uh, transmission delay. So in stop and wait only one packet is actually transmitted and until and unless the acknowledgement received for uh, the packet transmitted the next packet will not be processed. So here the time taken to transmit that is transmission delay and uh, time taken for the last byte from the frame is actually propagation delay that is TP and the acknowledgement from the receiver side the same propagation delay so the addition of the transmission delay and propagation delay is actually calculated as the efficiency 1 divided by 1 plus 2a so only one packet is transmitted the efficiency is less here in stop and wait protocol whereas in go back n protocol and uh, selective repeat protocol because we use the concept sliding window that is pipelining concept so number of packets can be transmitted in a given time again taking the flow diagram in stop and wait the window size is actually one but in go back n and selective repeat the window size of the sender is actually greater than one greater than one so we can transmit more number of packets in given time so the efficiency in go back n and selective repeat are more than the stop and wait protocol next buffers so nothing but window size so we know already the window size here in stop and wait protocol is 1 that is sender window size is 1 and receiver window size is 1 whereas in the go back n protocol the window size is actually greater than 1 that can be anything but in receiver side the window size is actually 1 but in selective repeat the window size of the sender is actually greater than 1 and the receiver window size is also equivalent to sender window size so stop and wait window size of the sender and receiver are one and one and in go back and sender window size is greater than one receiver window size is one but in selective repeat both sender window size and receiver window size are greater than one and equivalent the sequence numbers are also actually addition of both sender window size and receiver window size and the retransmission so retransmission is an important uh, important thing we need to consider in this protocol because for flow control where do we go for all this protocol to control the flow of uh, the packet uh, transmitted from the sender to the receiver in case receiver capacity is less than the transmitter then the receiver will not be able to receive all packets effectively so we use the point acknowledgement from the receiver for uh, the transmission of packets from sender. So in stop and wait protocol, the only one packet is actually transmitted and as soon as the transmitted and reached the receiver side, it is waiting for the acknowledgement and after the acknowledgement for the transmitted and the next data received only, then the sender will process with the next packet. Whereas in go back end protocol, uh, there we have a sliding window that is the concept in go back protocol is let's say the win outstanding window has four packets and the four packets are individually placed in the single buffer sequence number are actually followed based on the order in the outstanding window and if any single packet is corrupted for example if the first packet is corrupted and during the transmission time the first packet is corrupted and though the second, third, fourth packets are transmitted properly because the acknowledgement is not done from the receiver for the first corrupted packet, the receiver will discard, will discard the packet 2 and packet 3 and packet 4. So the sender, because the acknowledgement is not received from the receiver for the first packet, corrupted packet, the sender will have to transmit all the packets in outstanding 
window so in stop and wait protocol it is actually sending only one packet and after the acknowledgement received only it is processing next packet but in go back again even if a single packet is corrupted in an outstanding window so then the sender will have to send or retransmit all packets in the outstanding window the same concept though we have a group of packets that is uh, the sliding window is greater than one and unlike uh, go back again the selective repeat will not send all outstanding packets it will select and retransmit only the particular corrupted data from n number of packets and bandwidth in bandwidth actually representing the total number of bits that can be transmitted in a medium and if the medium is having a n number of bits transmitted in stop and wait we are processing only one packet at a time so the bandwidth utilization is less whereas in the go back n and in selective repeat the bandwidth actually utilized more than the stop and wait cpu is the similar way the number of packets are processed here so the programming actually is very somewhat simpler in stop and wait and in, uh, it is moderate in uh, uh, go back n and high in selective repeat why because we have sender window size in go back n greater than 1 and receiver window size is actually 1 and this the sequence number which we follow here uh, is the sequence is actually expecting the same order when 0 is transmitted the sequence is expecting 0 for example if one, packet 1 is transmitted then it is expecting the packet 1 and when 2 is transmitted once the acknowledgement is done for the packet 1 it is expecting 2 then the acknowledgement is done for 2 means it is expecting 3 whereas in selective repeat the order is not there is no need to follow the order as 0 1 2 3 the order can be anything the order can be anything and uh, in any order the receiver will receive the packet from the sender but later the receiver has to arrange this order in a sequence because the order is not followed while arriving the data and later the arrangement is done the programming level is also somewhat more than go back in programming part so here cpu requirement is high than the go back in part the same way the implementation of the protocol is also related to processing terms so these are the comparisons these are the comparisons and based on these parameters we can go for different applications in stop and wait the stop and wait may be useful when the bandwidth of the channel is less and few packets are actually transmitted and when the bandwidth of the channel is high we can go for go back in so based on the requirements we can select any protocols